I've been taking a close look at the pronunciation of the pinyin romanization of Mandarin Chinese. Well, today, I'd like to cover your eyes. I mean, the letter I, of course. Now, when you look at a word that's not English, as you're an English speaker, you're probably going to see the letter I and assume it's pronounced E. In a lot of languages, that's what the letter I will stand for, E. I'm here to tell you, when you're looking at pinyin romanization of Mandarin Chinese and you see the letter I and you say it E, you are going to be right most of the time. Most of the time. But there are a few exceptions. When you see the letter S, the letter C, the letter Z, yes, that's Z for Americans, I'm going to keep saying Z. When you see those, or SH, or CH, or ZH, don't move your eyes. You're probably thinking, don't move my eyes. What I really mean is, don't move your tongue when you say the letter I. The letter I in those cases stands for a barely a vowel sound that's made by just slightly releasing the tip of the tongue and otherwise not moving the tongue. So, S-I, S, S-H-I, S, C-I, S, C-H-I, S, Z-I, Z, Z-H-I, Z. Got that? So, if you see a name like the name of the last Empress Dowager of China, who was around at the turn of the 20th century, in the pinyin romanization to English eyes, the name looks pretty sexy. Actually, it looks like sixy. But since you've been paying attention, you know that that name is pronounced tzixi. The tones are actually tzixi, but, you know, for use in general English conversation where tone is a whole different thing and has no semantic meaning lexicalized that way, you just say tzixi. That's as close as you're going to get. Now, the Empress Dowager makes me think of a movie from 1963 in which she features prominently. This movie is 55 Days at Peking. Well, I hesitated there because, I mean, as I've told you before, Peking is just a kind of a crappy transliteration of Beijing, which is the name of the capital of China. And pinyin transliteration, it looks like Beijing, so you say Beijing. But this movie isn't called 55 Days at Beijing. Everybody in the movie says Peking. It says 55 Days at Peking. Look it up on IMDb. And when you look it up there, you will see that one of the stars is Charlton Heston. He plays a major Matt Lewis. Well, look on YouTube and you will find an early scene in which we first see Major Matt Lewis, as played by Charlton Heston, telling his men as they approach the capital city of China, that they should respect the Chinese, that they should understand that China has an ancient and deep culture, and that just because the Chinese people they meet can't speak English, that doesn't mean that they are in any way stupid or inferior. After all, his men don't speak any Chinese, huh? So, he starts off then by telling them a couple things to say in Chinese. He says, repeat after me. Yes is shit. No is boo shit. <laughs> so, okay, this is a movie from 1963, so we know where he was going with that. And that was as far as he was going to get. The thing is, though, he's not altogether that far off. It's two basic problems. First of all, the pronunciation is a little bit off. Secondly, there is actually no yes and no in Chinese. They don't, they don't have a word for yes and no. I mean, they can still say the same thing, but what they do is they affirm or negate the predicate of the sentence. If the sentence happens to be answerable with a yes or no question, you can say shi or shi de for yes and bu shi or bu shi de for no. So how do you say that though if, if you're trying to slip it into an English sentence? I mean, you may not be comfortable trying to say shi. Should you say shi? I would say you should really say sure. If you're from England, you're going to be right on, oh, sure. That's really, really awfully close. If you're from Canada or the US, you say sure. That actually sounds like a slightly different thing in Chinese. There's a free ranging R that attaches itself to the end of Chinese words. And sure is really sh with that R stuck on. But 
it's about as close as you're gonna need to come in English. If you can't quite say sh, say sure. And now just for free, I'm gonna give you an extra phrase in Mandarin Chinese. And it is this. Okay, so say somebody asks you to do something and you wanna say no problem, but you're feeling like classy, so you decide to slip into another language. You could answer them in French and say, mais oui, which means, but yes. But instead, you say, mais sure. And your friend might be like, so what, uh, I just started in French and moved to English? Is that clever? Is that stupid? But it's neither because it's actually good Beijing Mandarin Chinese. Mei sure means no problem. Literally, Mei means not, not have, doesn't have, I don't have. And sure means business, task, problem. So, Mei sure. So, got that all? S-I, S-H-I, shi. Z I Z Z H I Z C I T C H I Z got all that. Then it's 没事再见